and it can change how it's spraying and that's what it's doing. Hey guys, Steve here with Six Star Automotive. I've been looking forward to this one. I've got you guys set up so you can see everything that I can see. So today I'm gonna to do the fuel trim video I've been talking about. I've got a car here. I've got my scan tool hooked up. And of course, like any good scan tool, as soon as you hook it up, it's time for an update. Let's get started. Custom view. All right, fuel control data. We're going to click what we want to see. We want to see rear oxygen sensor voltage. We want to see front oxygen sensor, front air fuel ratio sensor, milli milliamps. I like to see front oxygen sensor volts. Ah, yes. I didn't think about this until just a second ago. So when you're doing fuel control data, you don't necessarily want to go vehicle specific like I did. Um, so what we're going to do is go home. We're going to go to OBD Direct. So vehicle specific data can actually have substitutes. And we don't want substitutes. We want to make sure that all the data we're getting is absolutely legit. So start communication we're going to go generic so this is going to be every car has this information that they have to provide and it's going to be raw data and generally speaking if i'm if i remember correctly we should be able to get voltage data and not just amperage data from the air fuel sensor i will see so display mode one display current data so we're going to go back to custom view so the less prem PIDs, each one of these is called a PID or a parameter identifier. Uh, each one of these obviously takes information, it takes data, and it's going to slow down the system. So if we want to get really fast responsive data, we're going to need to pick just what we want to see. So I'm going to look at short and long-term fuel trims. I'll explain those in just a second. I already know fuel system status because I just saw it. We're in closed loop. That's great. So I want to look at oxygen sensor, bank one, sensor two voltage. And I want to look at, here we go, oxygen sensor bank one, sensor one voltage. Awesome. Now we're going to go to graph view because I want to see all of these in, in sine waves. And there we go. See, because we only have four PIDs showing, we can get some really fast and really responsive data. So we're looking at here is oxygen sensor voltage bank one, sensor one, and bank one, sensor two. So in Subarus with the 2.5, you're going to have one bank. They don't really consider the left and right two banks. It's still it's still one bank. All right, so we've got our long-term fuel trim sitting at negative seven and our short-term at positive two. So remember, Scanner Danner, you want to add these guys together. So it's actually going to be positive five at this point, positive four. So this is this is looking pretty good, actually. All right, so watch our fuel trims. We've got it pretty stable at this point. We've got negative seven, positive two. Whatever. I mean, if we let this run long enough, eventually the short term should go down to zero, and then the long term will stay at whatever it needs to. It needs to stay at. So what's happening here is short term fuel trim is designed for very rapid changes. So if there's any kind of uh, change in how much air comes in or the load on the engine or any of that, it can it can change the air fuel mixture, lean or rich, really fast. Uh, and the long term is kind of what it sounds like. This is a, it's a longer term strategy. So if you think about like pulling a bungee cord, you know, so you, like the short term is the pulling and the long term is what's on the other end. If you pull the bungee cord, it's, it's eventually going to pull the other end to you, but it takes a little bit of time because it doesn't want to have the, the main adjustment for the fuel erratic. It should be relatively stable. But over time, if that change stays the same, then we know we have a real problem if it makes it into long term. At this point, anything plus or minus 10%, uh, generally speaking, the industry considers that acceptable. You could have fluctuations in how each fuel injector is spraying, issues with clogged injector nozzles, and just injectors themselves, the way they're manufactured, have a certain amount of tolerance with how much each one sprays uh, based on how much the computer thinks it's spraying. So you're never going to be at zero. You're always going to be plus or minus five to ten anything above ten and you you're looking at a problem generally speaking though when you have an issue with 
Uh, but check engine light on for rich or lean conditions, you're gonna be in the plus or minus 20. So, you know, in this case, we're actually looking pretty solid. <clears throat> well, let's do a throttle snap since we're electronic throttle on these guys. We're not gonna be able to do that under the hood. But, so as you can see here, if I snap the throttle, oh look, I do have a check engine light on, awesome. Anyway, if I snap the throttle, you can see that there's corrections going on constantly. So I'm gonna bring the RPM up. There we go, so the long term goes up to negative three. Short term's at negative 10. Look at that, we're pulling down. Interesting. I'm gonna, oh, there it goes again, okay. So now back to zero, back to point, th or back to negative three. So negative three, positive three. So look at that, we're at zeros. So another thing to know is that fuel trim has a couple of different stages. Like you've got an idle fuel trim and then you've got like a 2000 RPM fuel trim. So when you're checking trims, make sure that you check it at idle, but you also check it at 2000 RPM. That'll also help you uh, diagnose things like vacuum leaks or, or low fuel pressure. So if I let off the gas, we're gonna go rich. So we're gonna pull down fuel and then it's going to correct itself. There it goes. Now we're going to snap the throttle. That's going to cause a super lean condition. There it goes. See, here we go. It's going to cause a super lean condition that it's going to have to add fuel and it's going to have to correct. And it does it pretty quickly. So that's pretty nice. Alrighty. Yeah, see, we're back down to our negative seven. So we're at idle and then it goes back to that map. So if I go back up again to 2000 RPM, it's going to change to that secondary map. There it goes. Now we're at negative three. It's pretty interesting how this works. So what it's doing is it's changing the pulse width of the fuel injectors. I didn't really go over pulse width modulation uh, on my last video, but basically pulse width modulation is exactly what it sounds like. It's modulating or changing the pulse width. So if you think of it, it looks kind of like this. So you have 12 volts and then you ground to on and then up again would be off or 12 volts and then down to ground would be on. If this is a fuel injector, if I say on and then off, it's on spray and then off and then it's not spraying at all, and then spray, and then not spray at all. So it can change. And it can change how it's spraying, and that's what it's doing, is it's changing the pulse width in order to change the amount of fuel that's going into the engine. And it's using this information to do that. What's important about this is that these guys can lie, and the computer is relying on these guys to be telling the truth. So if your Bank 1 Sensor 1 sensor is... Uh, bias or it's it's got a problem where it wants to be kind of more lean than rich and it's lying then the computer has to believe it they won't agree with each other and, uh, and air fuel ratio sensors are known for this problem you'll have like a lean front o2 but a rich rear o2 because the front is calling lean so then the computer is trying to rich in the mixture and the front still calls lean so the computer still richens the mixture but then you see on the downstream that it's super rich and it's like wait a second he's saying it's lean he's saying it's rich and i'll show you how you figure out how that's true or not so what we do is what it's called oxygen sensor response testing so what you want to do is you want to find a, a like a large vacuum leak like here we've got the main vacuum line going to the booster so let's watch our oxygen sensors and our fuel trims when I pull this line off. And we're gonna see this, this system go really lean. I'm sucking a ton of air in. My short term goes really high. I'm adding 35% fuel. Look at my, my front air fuel sensor, my air fuel sensor in the front. We're adding, so we're at 3.6 volts. Low is rich. Okay, so this is another interesting thing about oxygen sensors and air fuel ratio sensors. So back in the day, there was a saying called low is lean. So if with an air, with an oxygen sensor, a zirconia type, like the one down here, if it's lean, you're gonna have low voltage, but if it's rich, you're gonna have high voltage. With an air fuel sensor, it's the opposite. So high is going to be lean and low is going to be rich. Most cars nowadays that you see are gonna have this configuration. So let's look at this again. We're gonna go lean and we're gonna see how fast it responds. That was a pretty fast response. That's pretty good. So we have immediate response going going lean there and there. I'll be right back, guys. Alrighty, biscuits and gravy. That was fantastic. Let's try this again. So remember, we want to check for lean. We want to check for its response because remember, we're doing an O2 response test. So we're checking for the for the oxygen sensor's ability to respond to a lean condition. So we want to see this go lean. 
There we go. Alrighty. We're responding. Now we're going back rich. So see now the downstream is responding when it goes super rich, when it re reacts to the lean condition that I just created. So that's looking good. So we're responding. So this is interesting how the downstream is stuck low. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to induce a rich condition. So you wanna use carburetor cleaner when you do this. If you listen to old Scanner Danner, you, if you use brake clean, you can create phosgene gas. Also, I found in some situations, the system doesn't react as well to brake clean as it does to carb clean. If I could stop getting interrupted. So we have, it's interesting how our bank two, bank one sensor two is so lean. Hmm. Whatever. We're going to see if this is actually a good thing because we can see if it responds properly to a rich condition and that will tell if it, it tell us if its lean condition is legitimate or not. So I'm going to go lean. Hopefully this thing doesn't stall. I'm going to grab my carb clean and I'm see now it's reacting and it's actually adding fuel. I'm going to add fuel like so and we want to see how it responds. So now we should go down. That's good. We're going down on the upstream and up on the downstream. Anything above 0.9 is really what you want to see. You want to make sure that it can get, really, I think it's above 0.8 and below 0.2 is like this, the spec. So we're at 0.9, so that is solid for a downstream sensor. I'm kind of varying how much fuel I put in. I don't want to, like, richen it to, the, to death. All right, so you can see our fuel trims now, we're looking at negative 28%, and on the long term, we're looking at negative 10. So we're down negative 30, 37, 38%. That's a lot. So now we're going to go lean if it doesn't die on me. There we go. Now we're going to see our fuel trim is adjusting. Our oxygen sensor is going lean and our upstream is going lean as well. And I want to see how fast they respond to rich. Rich, bang! And they both respond really quickly. So that is fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and cap this guy off. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, nope. Lost it. Blast. So what we're doing here is that we want to see and we want to make sure that the upstream and the downstream both react very quickly to sudden changes in rich and lean conditions. So you can see here we went rich, rich, and then lean, lean. It doesn't go like eh, slowly responding. It goes bang, lean, bang, rich. That's the oxygen sensor response test. So we want to make sure that it can respond quickly to that situation. Otherwise, you can't trust it. The information the computer gets from the oxygen sensors it uses for the fuel trim. So if your oxygen sensors are goofed, your fuel trim is going to be wrong. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I can do tons of more videos like this. I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. And always remember, you can come by and experience the six-star difference for yourself. Mm -hmm.